Did you know appendix cancer in people under 50 has surged so sharply that rates in the mid-1980s birth cohort are now four times higher than those born in the 1940s? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Today we're examining why this once rare disease is gaining ground in younger generations and what practical actions you can take to guard your gut. I'm Ethan Foster, and my goal is to lay out the numbers behind this trend so you can see exactly what has changed since the 1970s. I'm Alara Skye, here to unpack the lifestyle and microbiome shifts driving those numbers and to translate the latest findings into steps you can use right away. All appendix cancer cases now occur in adults under 50, even though overall incidence remains only about 1.6 per 100,000 people. That stark age skew tells you something new is stressing younger bodies. Researchers point first to expanding waistlines. Obesity rose steeply after the 1970s, and excess body fat is already linked to higher risks for several gastrointestinal cancers. When you carry more visceral fat, the inflammatory chemical load on your appendix and colon climbs year after year. Food quality changed in lockstep. Younger cohorts grew up on ultra-processed meals, sugary drinks, and seed oil-laden snacks their parents rarely saw. Those products flood your gut with refined carbohydrates and linoleic acid-heavy industrial oils, both of which feed chronic inflammation. Layer on a sedentary template, long hours at desks, streaming screens, and fewer daily steps, and the metabolic strain multiplies. Environmental exposures matter too. Plastics, pesticides, and water contaminants absent in earlier decades now reach you daily, while decades of routine antibiotic use erode microbial diversity. All of that sets the stage, yet appendix cancer still hides in plain sight. Early symptoms, bloating, vague abdominal pain, small shifts in bowel habits, mimic minor digestive upsets. Because routine colonoscopy rarely spots lesions in the appendix, many tumors surface only during emergency surgery. That means listening closely to persistent abdominal clues is crucial. If bloating, cramping, or unexplained weight loss linger beyond a couple of weeks, push for evaluation even if you're decades away from traditional screening age. Quick action can shift outcomes dramatically. Digging deeper, scientists found another culprit, colobactin, a genotoxin made by certain E. coli strains. Genetic fingerprints of colobactin damage, designated SBS88 and ID18, show up three times more often in colorectal cancers diagnosed before age 40 than after age 70. Colobactin leaves its first scars early in life, often striking the APC gene that normally reigns in cell growth. Once that safeguard is weakened, mutated cells may lie dormant for decades before flipping into cancerous overdrive in your 30s or 40s. These bacterial signatures appear worldwide, yet their prevalence tracks sharply with nations seeing the biggest spikes in early-onset gut cancers, underscoring a global microbiome-mediated threat. Taken together, the evidence points to a two-part problem. Modern lifestyle stresses weaken gut defenses, while early microbial insults plant mutations that blossom later. Prevention, therefore, must start with lowering chronic inflammation and nurturing a resilient microbiome from childhood onward. One of the most powerful levers is cutting linoleic acid. Industrial seed oils, soybean, corn, canola, sunflower, safflower, cottonseed, grapeseed, rice bran, and peanut. Saturate fast food, packaged snacks, and even restaurant salads. Swap them for butter, ghee, or tallow at home, and aim to keep total LA below 5 grams per day. Next, repair the gut barrier. Slow simmered bone broth and gelatin rich cuts like oxtail supply collagen and amino acids that rebuild the mucus layer lining your intestines. Once that barrier starts sealing, gradually add more whole food fiber so beneficial microbes can ferment it into butyrate, further strengthening tight junctions. Make fermented foods a daily habit. Unpasteurized sauerkraut, kimchi, kefir, and natural yogurt introduce live cultures that crowd out harmful strains and help keep colobactin producers in check. 
Choose versions without added sugars or preservatives so the bacterial balance tilts in your favor. Finally, crowd ultra-processed fare off your plate. Base meals on fresh produce, pastured meats, and minimally refined staples. Keep alcohol moderate and avoid tobacco entirely. All measures shown to trim cancer risk across the digestive tract. Combine that with regular movement to steady weight and improve insulin sensitivity. Here's your challenge. Over the next seven days, clear every seed oil bottle and packaged snack made with them from your kitchen, sip a mug of homemade bone broth each afternoon, and add at least two tablespoons of live culture sauerkraut or kimchi to one meal daily. Track how your digestion, energy, and cravings respond. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.